All right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. It's your buddy CJ here. We're talking about all things automotive industry. We're talking about car guy stuff, real gearhead talk, cars, 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 all the things that automotive enthusiasts love talking about. As I said, if you're looking for real gearhead talk, you are in the right place. And welcome, everybody. Love my subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please give me a like and subscribe. Guys, we have so much fun around here talking about cars. Old cars, modern cars, classic cars, muscle cars, supercars, exotic cars, sports cars, all kinds of cars, and some trucks. Listen, guys, everybody is welcome. We just really love doing what we do, and we're just getting started here at Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. So tonight, we've got a special episode. I wanted to come on here and really talk about two cars, two cars from the 1980s. One of them is this one, the Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS. Guys, we're going to compare this with its natural rival, the Buick Grand National from the 80s. Talk about the differences, the similarities, uh, and then I want to hear from you in the comments which ones you prefer. So let's talk about this one first. The Chevy Monte Carlo SS of this era had the coolest styling ever. I think this was one of the coolest cars on the road in the 1980s, if you know you were a automotive enthusiast back then, particularly some of the younger cats in the 80s, everyone thought these cars were cool. This was the alternative, if you will, to the Camaro, the Mustang, you know, the Firebird, the Trans Am. If you wanted something a little bit different, a little beefier, a little more modern muscle, as opposed to the more sports car oriented Camaro or Mustang, you went for the Monte Carlo SS. It was attainable. It was a mass, mass-produced Chevrolet. They made they made well over 100,000 of these cars in its run in the 80s. I think it's somewhere in the order of 150, 160,000 units were produced. These cars were plentiful, and guys were running to the lots to pick these up. This is shown in the classic black with the red, that sinister black. Uh, they made them in white. They made them in a blue. They made them in a maroon. I always They made a silver. I always preferred the black. These are my favorite wheels. What do you guys think? This is the way I would have specced a Monte Carlo SS from this era back in the 80s. They were just so cool. Now, the difference, you could really tell the difference between the regular Monte Carlo and the SS. This was clearly a special hot rod version, a factory hot rod version of a super mass produced family car and daily transportation, which was the Monte Carlo. They made a lot of these cars. Now, let's talk about the downside of this car. That 305 5.0 liter engine was not a big performer. And it, this was not a high performing car. Even for the era, it wasn't great. It was just kind of okay. Uh, you're talking about zero to 60, eventually 8.6 seconds uh, in this car, zero to 100, something like 25 seconds, quarter mile in 16.6 seconds, you know, this car was just about the coolest cruiser you could have in the 80s, but you weren't setting any land speed records in this car. I think that was, you know, one of the criticisms back in the day uh, for those of us who were automotive enthusiasts at the time and even to today, you know, these just weren't, this was for part of the malaise era. Like the, the cars in this era with emissions, the computers of that era, everything that Detroit had challenges with manifested itself in the this era of cars. So we just deal with it. I kind of accept it. Like if I, if I go out and snap one of these up, God, I'd love to. I'd love to have one of these. Leave me comments if, if you're a fan of these cars like your buddy CJ is. And if you have one, leave me comments. I think you just kind of have to accept that it is what it is. It's a cruiser. It's not a performance beast. Don't buy one of these if you want something that's going to get you excited every time you punch it. It's just not. Now, did they modify these? Did guys drop big blocks into these? Headers, you know, intakes, cams, you name it. Of course they did. Forged internals. They blew them up. <laughs> you know, a lot of these cars got wrecked. You know, a lot of these cars were messed with. That's why now they're kind of collectible. The aero coupes are even more collectible with that bubble window. I was not a fan of the aero coupe glass, the bubble window back in the day. Leave me comments if you were. Uh, now I think it's totally cool. I want to buy one. Uh, but back in the day, I wasn't nuts about it. Uh, but again, these were common cars. You'd see them in high school parking lots. You'd see them, guys cruising around, even young cats cruising around in these on a, on a Friday night, Saturday night in any town USA. 
Uh, let's talk about next level. Let's talk about the natural rival to the Monte Carlo SS, the Buick Grand National from the 80s. This would be the natural rival, the nemesis, if you will, to the Monte Carlo SS. This car had legit performance numbers. This car was much more special and rare, whereas the Monte Carlo SS, I just got done telling you, they produced like 160,000 of them in the run. They produced like 30,000 turbo Buicks uh, all in, I believe, during the run. And the Grand National was was even a subset of that. Yes, there are super special editions like the GNX, but the T-Type, all those other turbo Buicks, the Grand National, the, all in, I think they produced around 30,000. So you compare that 20 to 30,000 cars with 160,000 cars in the, Chev in the Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Clearly, the Monte Carlo SS wins just in terms of volume, but in terms of performance, and cool factor, the Grand National wins on all fronts. Grand National wins. This thing had somewhere in the order of 235 horsepower, not from a V8, from that V6 turbo ahead of its time, somewhere around 330 foot-pounds of torque. You're talking about zero to 60 sub five second in the 80s. Like this is ridiculous for the 80s. Quarter mile time, somewhere around 13.6. That's still fast. Okay, that's still respectable today in 2024. Grand National was just incredible in every way. You know, these had a higher MSRP, whereas, you know, the Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS, somewhere between 11000 and 15000 somewhere in there as MSRP. You know, your M original MSRP for the Grand National, somewhere around probably fourteen to 15000 up to 18000 So, again, more expensive cars. Generally speaking, I'll tell you my direct experience. Your buddy CJ was there back in the 80s. This was like your uncle's car or your dad's car. This was probably not the young dude's car in the high school parking lot or, you know, you didn't go out and buy one of these after you graduated high school like you might with a Chevy Monte Carlo SS. That's just the way it was. This was definitely more rare, more special, more expensive. And it was a Buick. It wasn't a Chevy, a mass, mass, mass produced Chevy Monte Carlo. This was a very limited edition Buick Regal as the Grand National, as the T-Type. God knows the GNXs were rare. Um, but listen, what do I think? I mean, these cars were smoking Corvettes, Camaros, and Mustangs all day. Uh, that was a bit of a topic of controversy. We all used to talk about it at the bus stop <laughs> or at school at the lunch table. You know, this car was legendary. It's not just the car that got famous after Fast and the Furious or that's at the auto auctions now. Back in the day, this car meant a lot to us as automotive enthusiasts. I was a big fan of this car when I was a kid. I still am. And a lot of you guys who grew up in the same era with me, even some of you younger cats are into these cars. And you've been that way for a long time. But guys, I claim the Grand National from a performance standpoint is clearly and obviously the winner. But just in terms of its prevalence and its significance, the Chevy Monte Carlo SS, let's not hate on it. That car is cool. That car is 80s cool. That car is muscle car cool. It's got a sinister look to it. Uh, and, it and it just, with its prevalence and the, the mass production over 160,000 or somewhere around 160,000 produced Chevy Monte Carlo SS is also an attainable muscle car classic from that era. So guys, those are just some of my thoughts on the Chevy Monte Carlo SS showdown, 1980 showdown, Chevy Monte Carlo SS versus the Grand National. What do you guys think from a performance standpoint, from a cool factor standpoint, which one would you rather own? I want to hear from you. Leave me comments. Leave me comments. You guys know I'll respond to all the comments I can. Your buddy CJ loves you. Guys, give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. We will see you on the next one, guys. And until then, peace.